Hello, so I'm going to talk through how I set up the, spline, the spine controls here, uh, which is something it's missing in the, in the videos and I got a question asking how I've done this. Uh, so basically the FK chain is just the normal, um, yeah, FK uh, controls. And so I have a setup spline IKFK function, which I'm running in the setup event here in the main graph um, here so the inputs I'm giving is joints so all the joints from the spine then FK controls all the FK controls and then IK controls are for IK uh, so start start tangent and tangent and end I put in this order because that's the order they appear like if you go from bottom to top um, so first this one, then this one, then this one, and then this one as, as the highest. So the way I set up this is basically the FK. Uh, so here I have the function. I will pass um, here. So if I want to set up the FK controls, I just use a get transform array that is getting the joint position. Um, and then I'm setting transform array for the FK controls because they are the same numbers. But to place the IK controls, uh, it needs a little bit of calculation. So one thing I've created is this function called distance between two joints. I basically give two joints to the function and then I pass at the first joint, so zero, I get its transform and then at the index one, which is the second joint, I get the transform and then I run a distance between. And then when I return, I return uh, something called distance between two joints. So I have this number is stored. So how I use it is uh, it's like that. So basically I get the joints uh, array, which is all those uh, like seven uh, joints. And I do first an add to get the first joint, and then I do a num, which will give me the length of the array. Um, so let's say you'll say eight. Uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It will give me seven as a result. But I want the index because the index always starts on zero. So the last index is actually the length of the array minus one. So that's how I get the last joint. So first joint, last joint, I pass and I create uh, an array here with this two information. And then what I do is that I will calculate the distance between these two joints. So the start of the spine, the end of the spine. And then I divide this number by three. So imagine I'll have one position around here, one position around here. Um, so then what I do is that from these two, the first and the last joints, I get the first joint and um, um, I'm set, this is to set the transform of the IK controls. So this is a set transform array, which is connected to the IK controls. So in here I have the transform zero will be the first IK control, transform one will be the second one, transform two will be the uh, spine end tangent, and transform three will be the spine end, the top one. So going back to here, so I have the two joints, first joint, last joint, I get the first joint, and then I get the transform of the first joint, and straight away I pass as the first transform or the of the first control. So my first joint would then be the same my my sorry my IK control, uh, the start IK control will be in the same position as the first joint of the chain. Um, so similar to the last one, so I know my last control, I want it to be in the same position as the last joint. So then I get a, um, 
I get from these the first and the last joint. I get the last joint, which is index one, and then I get its transform and I connect directly to the final uh, control. For the two middle controls, which are the tangent one, so what I do is that I get the transform at the first joint and then I add to the number that I had of splitting through in three, sorry. So I get the first one and I add a little bit um, and then the result will give me the translation set of that control. So it goes a little bit up in Z in here. And then similar to the second tangent, but instead of adding, I subtract. So I get the location of the last joint and then I subtract this calculation here. So it goes a little bit lower and then I place that in the Z axis as well. Uh, and that's how I set up the spines. Um, another question that came through, it was about debugging the, the actual spine asset. So let me just open here the forward spine. Um, okay. And yeah, I really recommend using, you, uh, using the debug function here. So how do you know the primary, the up axis and the, uh, this is just the direction, the, this bold red line here, which shows you where is forward in the spine. Uh, but basically the primary axis will be the one going upwards. So in this case, you can see here that up is blue, which is the Z axis. As you can see from the control, Z axis is up. So I know my primary axis is the one that goes uh, aligned to the other joints. So Z, then the up axis is the one forward. So in this case, is Represent, represented by the green here. So I know green is Y, so Y up axis is one. And to double check, you can actually use this because this is just a representation of uh, the up axis of the spline. So because I put in 10 in Y, it means that it's going forward to make sure, for example, if I had put in uh, X, it will show kind of going this way, which is not what we want. We want it to go forward in the character. So then it's, uh, he's just 10, it's just, uh, you, you change that according to the size of the character, basically, is just to visualize. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this uh, helps. And also all the joints here means that they all need to be oriented and following the same direction. If you have a couple of joints here that are in, in different rotations and different axes, then uh, that, that will cause problems because your spine won't really know which, which direction to go. And that can be an issue.